I'm not as pretty as that person. I'm always pretty. Have you ever had a comparison made about you or done a comparison yourself about you towards somebody else? It's really actually super easy to do. In fact, I think we do it all the time and we don't really realize that we're doing it. I'm not as pretty as that person. I'm always pretty. I'm not as healthy as that person. I'm not as skinny as that person. I'm not as wide as that person. I'm not as tall as that person. I'm not as... And I think society today has really helped advance these games of comparison. And I call them games of comparison because that's really what they are. We are playing a game in our brain that we are losing when we are comparing. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Not only are we fearfully and wonderfully made, we are made for a purpose and on a purpose by God to do his purpose. I think sometimes we as human beings forget what that means. I understand I'm a weird human being. I have no colon. I like a lot of things that are for younger people, and I like to do a lot of things that are different and weird and strange. But everything I do is on purpose and for a purpose to try to draw people to God. And sometimes I'm really, really, really good at that. And sometimes I fail miserably. But through all of that, I have learned two very important things when it comes to comparison. We can sit there on our social medias, on many various forms of work, or looking at people, working alongside people, being around lots of different kinds of people, we can all sit there and say, I'm not as blank as this person. And that answer is absolutely probably true, except for one thing. You're not supposed to be that person. And I think Satan has done an amazing job of beating us down about this idea that we can't be as spiritual as this person, even though that person struggles with sin too. We can't be as well-spoken as this person, even though that person might have 20 years of of public speaking. Obviously, I don't. But through all of that, Satan continually beats us down with this idea of you're not as blank as whoever. And fill in that blank with whatever you want. Satan does an amazing job of beating us down with that. What Satan forgets, and we need to remind ourselves, is we are not. But with God, we are. Now, I know that doesn't mean we get to be super skinny toothpicks, but not all of us are called to be called. <clears throat> but not all of us are called to be super skinny toothpicks. And I know not all of us are the most athletic people in the world. Some of us are not called to be the most athletic person in the world. I don't know. Some of us aren't the most technologically advanced brains in the world. Still high enough that I can get stuff done, and I know a lot of stuff, and I still continue to learn a lot of stuff. And see, with that, all of us are created to be unique, and we're all created to be different, and we're all created to be something. That God has made us. Maybe we're not that person yet. Maybe we're not doing that thing yet. But God has called us into that thing. And it's our job to go do that thing. The strange part is, is that we get so tied up in the comparison, we never get past the comparison. I think about this as we're going through this study in Bible school on Sunday mornings, 9 o'clock. Our high school, middle schools are going through this comparison. We started with David's mighty men and it's great stories of, of these mighty men doing great things. But out of the 37 mighty men, like five of them are Israelites. That means there are 32 of them that are not. Now that number's kind of made up. It's kind of somewhere between that. There's all these different people in there. And we know that those people are not Israelites because they would be from the tribe of whatever, you know. What, there's, a, there's a mighty man that's from Benjamin. Not even all 12 tribes are represented in these mighty men. And they do great things. And I think that comparison's there for two reasons. One, there's a lot of people in there that are stepping up because maybe Israelites aren't stepping up. And two, all people can get involved in God, not just the God's chosen people, the Israelites. And I think there's still something super important in that because far too often we think that we're not worthy, we're not capable, and we're not able to do that because we don't have blank. I don't really have patience with kids. doesn't mean you can't be involved with kids. Maybe you just need someone else to vent off to when you're done. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't understand all this newfangled technology. You don't need to to talk to a kid. Well, I don't, I don't think that they're going to listen to me. Have you tried? All I want to do is tell them to sit down and shut up. Sometimes they need to be told that. And sometimes we need to be told it's okay if they do that. I'm convinced. I'm convinced that we as a church proper, meaning like church worldwide, are stuck in this game of comparison. 
where we are comparing ourselves to X church or comparing ourselves to X church. We're not as big as this church, so we can't be very good. We're not as big as this church, we can't be very good. Instead of comparing ourselves to what God has called us to be. And when we actually get out of that comparison game and just step forward and do it, we are no longer comparing ourselves to anything that what God asked us to be. And we might still fall short there. That's where God comes in and fills that in. Here's the question I have for you today. And my challenge for you this week, where are you comparing yourself that you are falling short and not letting God fill it in? And where are you comparing yourself to others around you and not just getting it done because God asked you to? I've had to ask myself for this over the last three weeks. Comparison game is easy. Well, these people do this and it's amazing and I can't because I can't do that. We, these people do this and it's amazing, but I can't do that. And I've come to two conclusions and I'm going to just, I don't normally end this. I usually end it with a question and move on. But I've come to the conclusion that I've got to be more aggressive in my approach to teenagers. And the reason that I'm not like this person or that person is because I don't make myself accessible to teenagers as much as I could. I'm not saying I'm purposefully avoiding them. I'm not. Doing some things this year to be more publicly accessible. And number two, I need to get over myself just a little bit and get more emotionally involved. And what I mean by that is invest in them, whether they invest in me or not. And that's hard for me because I'm an outroverted introvert, which means I really like to be introverted, but I can be outroverted like that. And it's just me getting over that thing in my brain that it was from when I was a young child and, you know, sit down, shut up and don't talk because the adults are talking. Well, I'm an adult now. I should talk to it also means that I have to listen to kids more and stop whatever it is I'm doing and talk with kids more. And those are two things that I, the comparison game has got to get out of my brain with. And those are challenges that I'm doing for myself. I'd love to hear what you guys are doing, what you guys are challenging yourselves to do. Beyond that, I hope you guys know that Jesus loves you all more than anybody else ever can.